We had a female trucker uh, that canceled. Couldn't make it in here. And, you know, that's just the way it is sometimes out there on the road. You know, that's why the road comes in different patterns. You know, you can get a interstate. Keeps going. You get an intersection. Meets up with something. You get cul-de-sac. You get dead end. You get um other roads. So, trucker canceled. So, you know the podcast is going well when a female trucker cancels on it gasoline females you know just ladies out there burning gasoline 18 wheeler bitches you know what i'm saying legitimate women um what else happened i got rejected by a woman i don't know if well not even the trucker i didn't even think about that but um a i hit on a woman and got rejected uh i'll tell you what happened so you know i went to this place out here and we're coming out to you live right now from the Central East out here. And and I went to a locale here, local shop. And they sold crepes, crepery. And I don't know what a crepe is, but I didn't care. Once I saw this lady working there, I said, all right, you know, I'll lead them until, you know, she and I are married if I have to. Um, They had a girl in there and I saw her and. You know, I made some small talk, and it was it was awkward because we both had masks on. You know, uh, having a mask on, it's kind of like the beginning of like um, Shrek or whatever. You know, because you don't know how anybody really. You're not getting the full package. You're just kind of getting that Japanese package of somebody. You know, kind of snout up or mid snout upwards. You know, you're kind of getting that, um, you know, like everybody's kind of a desert nine. You know, when they got that Middle Eastern, you know, a lot of Middle Eastern women, they wear the kind of that word yarmulke, whatever it is, that that muffler. You know, they wear that front muffler. You can't see them. I was in uh, Saudi Arabia one time at the airport. And they had a man there and fat fella, I'll be honest with you, he really was. And I had, if I could think of another word to describe him, I would use it. But I cannot. And this, was, this man was what you would call a fat fella. And he uh, had about five women with him, all of his wives. And they all had on that, um, you know, just that little... Kind of, they're all wearing like a what's behind door number one kind of curtain right on their face. You know, you can't see them all. So that's called that desert nine, you know, or that desert eight. Everybody's kind of a desert nine when you can only see the eyes. So I went in there and I'd seen her and I like, you know, was nervous. And anyway, you know, I went in there and I went in there a follow up time because I'm the kind of guy that'll show up somewhere, fall in love with a woman that works behind a counter. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I'll I'll go somewhere, fall in love with somebody who works at the place, and then try and and then go back to the place to try and profess my love or make a connection. So anyway, so I go back and I was nervous. And we talked about MMA fighting. We talked about adult male, you know, uh, you know, fighting. And so I figured I would try and talk about that again. When I saw her, I couldn't remember her name. And so I was like, Hey, remember me? You know, what's your name? And she's like, Oh, my name is, you know, Clara, I believe was her name. And so then I was like, Oh, uh, have you been watching any of the fights? And she said, no, I haven't. And then I was like so, you ever like are so nervous like you can't even hear what the other person is saying? You're just like, oh, have you ever watched any of the fights? And you just, you can't even, no matter what their answer is, your next question is going to be something like, do you have a boyfriend? 
you know, uh, so she said, I don't know what she said. She might have, who knows? She could have been calling the police, but I was like, go, oh, do you, you know, have, um, maybe we should watch the fight sometime. And, and that was kind of weird because I didn't, I don't even know kind of how she responded. If she was like, yeah, or maybe, or, um, and then I was like, oh, do you have a boyfriend? And that's how I said it too. Like, do you have a boyfriend? Like, I just got so, just, I was just strung up, you know, just like when you see a rabbit and he's got one of his legs caught in the, uh, in that wire, you know, do you have a boyfriend? Uh, and that's how I was verbally. You know, I was that verbal kind of hung rabbit. And she said, I do. And I didn't have a plan for her having a boyfriend. I did not have, my plan was I, I ask her out and she maybe says yes or no, I guess was also, I mean, that's probably, that's always, that's the biggest option, but I didn't have a plan for when I was going to think she says, do I, oh, I'm making this story so long. So I was thinking, okay, I ask her, and then she sa uh, she says, no, I don't. And then I follow up with, oh, well, maybe I could take you out sometime, or I could buy you something that's not a crepe, you know, or something, just a chill line. Well, I said, do you have a boyfriend? And she said, yes. And so when she said, yes, I couldn't, it, was, it, it would have been weird for me to follow up with, oh, well, maybe we should go out sometime. So I... Didn't know what to ask her, so I just asked her name again. And I was like, Oh, what was your name? <laughs> so it just was it didn't make it didn't make any sense, man. Uh it just didn't make any sense, man. Um so anyway, oh, and this was the worst part. Then then I had to i I'd already ordered the food, so I had to sit there. She said yes. I, I was like, Oh, what was, what was your name? What is your name? I said, what is your name? What is your name? And she told me her name again. And then the conversation was just, and then she'd like given me like my plate and fork and knife that comes with your food that you order. And you just go sit down at your table and then it comes out. And I was the only person in there. So now I have to sit and I, this is where I really messed up. I sat facing the counter. I sat facing her at the counter. And then I had to sit there and just eat a crepe, which is the loneliest, saddest thing you can eat as a rejected man. It almost feels like one of those Japanese game shows like, oh, you lost, you eat the crepes, you know. And so I'm sitting there just eating this sad, every bite tasted like this girl did not like me. Um, but I did it. I did it. I went in there. I asked her out. I didn't get, she didn't, I, I, there was no option. And I asked her her name again. And then I sat and point blank ate a crepe in front of this woman. Very, very sad. Um, very, very sad. So. So anyway, if you've ever been rejected, if you've ever tried and failed with a woman, um, which I, I'm sure you have or you wouldn't be listening to this podcast, uh, then I'd love to know about it. And I'd love to hear the sharing of it. And if you can hit the hotline and keep it concise, you know, um, and hit the hotline 985-664-9503. And let me know about that moment. Let me know how you handled it or how you didn't handle it. The succeeding is in the trying. That's where it is. That's where it is. So if you've ever been rejected, bro, rejected nation, son, you feel me? Gang, man. We out here, man. We out here. Let's get into the episode. Uh. This is Paul Cawthon, Holy Ghost Fire. I got the Holy Ghost fire and it's burning in me. I 
I got the Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Got the Holy Ghost fire and I'm burning down the streets. I got a sweet little patty at your own in a caddy with me. I got a sweet little patty and she rolled in the caddy with me. I got a whole lot of product for my Holy Ghost mama. She make it sweet eyes for me. Don't let me down, a sweet mama. Oh, a sweet mama, don't let me down. About me and where in hell girl you'd stay. If you knew the truth about me, ain't no way in hell, girl, you'd stay. Have you disappointed a woman in your life, Riley Mal? Oh, have I? I definitely have. And how do you feel about it now? And now that some time has passed? I would say pretty great because she wasn't the one. And in hindsight, how do you know that she wasn't? I think it was just the feeling. I, I just had a strong feeling she wasn't the one. But at the time, you had a feeling she was, huh? Oh, of course. And what was it you think leading you down that down that path to thinking she was? Do you think it was naivety? Do you think it was um, sensualness? You know, Do you think it was uh, the devil? What do you think it was, really? No, I think she just... Um I don't know. She just, she was acting really different and odd. And, um, like, what was she doing? Like, what do you mean? Like, walking, like, sleepwalking or something? Well, apparently, what I was told is that, um, she's pregnant. And I was like, haha, what? Um, so then I you fell in love for a pregnant woman. Pretty much. And I had no idea because she wasn't showing yet. So mm -hmm. it was, it was very early in the stage. And I, I literally had no idea. That pregnancy, the first three months, they can trick you. That's the thing about leeway. That's called leeway, Riley. And that's where, you know, a woman will have a certain amount of time. They can still trick another man. They get pregnant over here. They get pregnant with Jerry. And then they tell him, Lance, oh, I love you. You know, I love you. Come, you know, spray in me. And then they trick you and say, oh, yeah, you, you know. You must have a strong seed. I got that six-month baby. You know, I got that little hatchling right here, six-month. You know, that, that little premature bad boy. And he comes out weighing a pound, pound and a half, some of these children now. You know, half the wombs out there, they, you know, you see a womb up close on the camera and the windows are busted out in it. Half these women out here, they got... You know, they got Cardi B blaring out of the damn second floor of their womb. You can't even know. You don't even know what's going on anymore. You know, it's all people's thought and people, you know, somebody's, you know, you hear somebody stealing a, a purse and jumping off a rooftop of the damn womb. And you're like, what is going on here? But that's where we are right now. A lot of these prepackaged wombs, a lot of, you know, these uh, prefab you, it used to be back in the old days, Riley, a woman had a decent womb in her. You know about it? You heard about it? Yeah, definitely. And then now you get these ladies, they got the damn, you know, you don't know if it's a womb or a damn Ziploc bag in there. You don't know. It's not as reliable as it once was. You, back in the day, they had a woman out of damn concrete womb. It was something, you know, they had a bird's nest in the corner. They had, it was, there was more, there was something there. It was something, it had a doorbell on it. You know, it was a damn real place. And now you got these, you know, they got somebody smoking on the porch. You don't even know a guy, the guy. So it's just, it's a different time, man. It is a different time. What's going on? Um, 
What's going on? I was thinking the other day about about racism. Because obviously I think about it a lot. And we've discussed it before on here, Riley. Would you agree with that? Well, I think that here's what I'm thinking is nowadays you see a lot of children, a lot of mixed children. You know, you see somebody and we talked about it last a couple weeks ago. There's somebody's Japanese and uh, and Filipino, you know, or you see somebody that's, um, you know, from Delaware and also somebody that's uh, Malaysian, you know, malware. They'll call them or whatever. But when I was young, they called them mixed. Oh, look at that little mixed fella. You know, you'd see a kid, he'd have a white body, one black leg. You know, you'd see a kid, he had a little, you know, maybe he was 10%, uh, you know, maybe he was 10% um, Pinoy. And he'd have one kind of lean eye, you know. It was just different, man. You'd see, you know, but they call him mixed. Oh, that little fella's mixed. Look at him. You know, you'd see a little, uh, you'd see a black kid, but he'd have long blonde hair. You know, and he'd perm his own hair at night. You'd be like, oh, damn, he's something, you know. So it was just a different time. People were more mixed. But I'm thinking that because there's still some racism out there. You know, and I'll name a couple of groups that do not get along really well. Or they get along well, but there's still some tension. That's a better way to say it. Black and white. Chinese and black. Also, Mexican and black in prison. Okay? And this is all stuff that I've heard from verified people. And the rumor is black versus alien. Or extraterrestrial ETs. You know, I have a lot of black friends that have told me that there is low key beef between extraterrestrials and the urban community. Um, do you know any rally any ra- what groups that have racial tension? Um, Japanese and Germans. There you go. And there you go. Right from the little horse's mouth right there. You heard it. And where'd you hear about it? Um, In school for one. Okay. Uh, but also for another, you know, a few of my friends that are German. Sorry about that. I have an email account. But here's what I'm thinking is the one, the way we get to the future, because you see a lot of these fellas now, a lot of these ladies that are doing well when it's mixed culture. You got your Patrick Mahomes is out there. This guy, I mean, who, who knows what he's doing? This dude do anything he wants. You got, who's somebody that's mixed that does well, Riley? Um, me. Who else? I'm trying to think of a female. There's definitely other people. But here's what I'm saying is that this, I think eventually all the race, every race will be mixed in two, three centuries. You're going to have, everybody is going to be part everything. And then that's when everything gets unlocked, you know, like we kind of unlock some of the key to the universe when you get to that, you know, that kind of captain planet um, type shit. Basically, because here's the thing. That's the thing. It's a magic deal because everybody's still, you know, people still kind of cornering off for their respect. People still blocking out, posting up for their own races a lot. And um, I think the, the key to it all is, is once you get all of that, all of the rate, once it's all mixed completely and you get that, you know, Japanatric. Mahomes, basically, when you get that full, it's almost like if you took around a cup at a United Nations meeting, you know, or even just a hand, you put your hand out like that, had everybody e-jack into your hand at a uh, UN rally or something, 
or a mixed event. And you mix all of that up. And you put that shit in the oven on high for about three hours, bro. I bet when you open it up, you got a, just a big bunt cake that it would never, ever be racist. And I believe that a thousand percent, man. So I'm just trying to think outside of the box. You know, I'm just trying to think of things that could be this, be the end game. You know, I'm just trying to think of the things that would be the end game out here. I got to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Do you have a hard time taking pills like me? If you're like me, you'll get all your vitamins in one hand in the morning. 12, 16 different, you know, pills and little nodules. You know, hell, I'll even put a suppository in there and take it through the throat. I'm a bad man. And you get that stack, I'll put them in my mouth and just hit them with one big glass of water. Try to do them all at once. But if you are uh, if you have a hard time taking pills like me, you're not alone. That's why you need to get the only Sildenafil and Tadalafil chewables by visiting bluechew.com. If you like sex or uh, or just even just or even just jerking yourself off when you're extremely hard, then you will love Blue Chew. Blue Chew. You get the first chewables for the bedroom. That's right. Bluechew.com affiliated physicians work with you to find the dosage and active ingredient that is best for you. They're not going to put you on a 98 octane if you only got a if you get if you're running on a transmission that can only handle a 70 octane. They don't want you so hard you can't even hug anybody. Sometimes you see somebody so erect they can't even hug someone because they just they overdosed them with the wiener hitters. You know, they just next thing you know they they got a job as a scarecrow and they still haven't been laid because the doctors are overdosing you. It only takes a few minutes to connect with a bluechew.com affiliated physician and if you qualify you get prescribed online quickly. There's no in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at a pharmacy. Ships directly to your door in discreet packaging. Here's a great deal for you guys. Visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code Theo. Just pay $5 shipping. That's B L U E C H E W dot com. Promo code T H E O. I remember one time just being, and I don't know what had gone on. I think somebody come through town with a new dish, a new, you know, a new uh, type of maybe Mexican food or something, you know, a new spice or something. Because I grew up in a time people would come through town, something would come through town, it would hit everybody. You know, I remember a bad hit of LSD, a bad uh, batch of LSD came through our town and nobody could spell anything. Nobody could you know, a fire batch, or the, the kids would call it now a fire-ass batch of LSD came through town, and people couldn't spell, people couldn't, I remember one one type of drug came through town, people couldn't tie their shoes in our town for half a month. People walking around, just, you know, people having to wear slippers a lot. You'd see a working man, an electrical man out there in slippers. You'd see people walking into the mine with their, you know, shoes untied, just couldn't, it was a different time. It was a way different time. Uh, what else? I remember heavy golf balls. Somebody sold a batch of heavy golf balls. They'd, whenever they got them made, they were too heavy. And so suddenly all the men in our town, they were hitting ball, hit doing golf, but they couldn't. The scores were low. Take a man 11 shots to do a par four. You know, men out there crying, men start drinking, abusing their wives and lying. You know, so I grew up in a time where a, uh, a rare product or a, a misman they used to call it mismanufacturement would trouble a society would ruin a small town ruin a small town and then i remember yeah a certain a rare spice or something something maybe a native i don't know what happened maybe something was in the water and everybody all the you know people were just damn erect god people were erect i mean you'd have a you know 
You'd have a bird laying right on your front. For no reason, you know, a dog would just come run at you and just grab you by the front. And it was just, I mean, it was just insane. You know, it was just insane. But you got to be careful. You got to be careful and get the right dose for your peen, baby. You run high on that dose, man. You will, I mean, you will just, I mean, your lips get hard. You can't close your eyes. I've taken some pills that'll, I mean, that'll make you damn cry. You know, make you cry, man. Uh, what else do we have, man? Let's get into, um, well, we had a couple calls, man, and I had a lot of nice calls after last week's episode, but we, we got some calls. People come through uh, with some different calls and verbal calls right here. As always, the hotline, 985-664-9503. Let's get into that. Theo, man, hey, we're calling out here really close to Covington. Hello, man. And Covington, that's my hometown. Where'd you, did, you, did you know I was from somewhere, Raleigh? I did not know exactly where. Well, I am from Covington, Louisiana. Do you know what it's famous for? Cheese? Oh, wait, that's Wisconsin. Yep, nope. It is famous for tallest statue of Ronald Reagan in America. Tallest full copper statue of Ronald Reagan. You have a favorite statue? Can't say I do. You got to have one, man. You should get one. I like, uh, I'll tell you a couple of mine. You're welcome to borrow it if you need it. There's one in... um, There was the tallest Bob Hope statue, and that was in uh, Duran, I believe it was Duran, Illinois. Can you look that up, actually, do you mind, Riley Mal? Um, Hate to put you to work there, but you got to do something, you know. Um, Tallest Bob Hope statue. Peoria, Illinois has a Richard Pryor statue that I believe is full pewter. Or maybe 70% pewter or something. And they quit putting copper in a lot of statues because a lot of homeless and uh, drug addicts or DAs will chip it out and uh, and sell it and smoke it. Smoke uh, drugs with the money. So you'll, you know, you do a copper statue and then next thing you know it only has one arm and they got, you know, 11 more you know, 11 more people smoking crack near you. And you're just wondering how it all financially made sense. What do you have? A tallest Bob Hope statue. Any information? Oh, you wanted Bob Hope. I looked up the statue of Hope in uh, Friendship, Indiana. Oh, okay. What is that? It is a private memorial or monument displayed in a graveyard or cemetery. Hope is one of the seven virtues of the Christian religion. So it's literally just about hope. Oh, that's beautiful. Not Bob Hope, but... Okay. Well, that's close enough, man. If, if you get that Bob Hope intel, let us know. So, yeah, but I appreciate it, fellow. And what I'm telling you is down here, he called from Covington, Louisiana, and that's have the world's stallest uh, statue of Ronald Reagan. And that's 10 feet tall, unprecedented Ronald. People refer to it locally, or the UR. Onward. We just want to say, hope you're doing good. We appreciate everything. We just made it to God. Uh, keep everything on the top shelf, man. We love you. Later. Amen. And they just made it through the storm down there in Louisiana. Storm Delta. And that's where we're at now. We got airlines sponsoring the storms. What? To, that's how it is now. This next storm brought to you by Entergy. This next storm brought to you by Task Rabbit. Here's a storm. Here's a tornado. Brought to you by Bratches Candies. Do you like Bratches? Get you some. And next thing you know, your house is on its ass. That's what it's coming to. It's coming to natural disasters sponsored by companies. Oh, okay. 
Here's your craft macaroni and earthquakes, brother. You want some of that? Rabies. Oh, this strand. It's fierce. It's just as fierce as the new Spotify. That's how I'm just telling you what's next, guys. It's all for sale now. It's all for sale. But I'll say this about Louisiana, and I'm hyped up. I'll tell you I'm hyped up. You know, and I'm tired of sometimes, you know, I'm not tired of anything. But I'm sometimes I'm hyped up and sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I have a different mood. And I'm hyped up today. You know, we're supposed to have a trucker and we don't have a trucker. We're supposed to have a trucker and we don't have a trucker. Okay? So that's where I'm at. I'm handling it. I'm moving forward. But dude, every time, I'm afraid to even call people in Louisiana anymore. When I call home, man, everybody's hiding from a storm. Oh, what's going on? We under a blanket right now. We got 40 of those weighted blankets, you know. We riding it out. Yeah, we having a party. We just, you know, we got five handles of Tito's. You know, hell, the dog's having a damn jello shot right now. We out here at my cousin's, we riding it out. We driving to Austin. That I feel like the only thing living in Louisiana is basically like playing hide and go seek with the weather. That's it. It's just like you and Mother Nature in a game of Red Rover. That's what's going on when you live down there in Louisiana on the Gulf Coast. We, we packing everything up. I'm like y'all just get y'all just moved in. Yeah, we moving out. The rain's coming. <laughs> Oh, man. Bless you guys. I'm glad you guys made it through it. I'm glad you guys made it through it, man. And thanks for the update. And, um, and you know, it gets me. Remember about four. You hear that rain, Riley? I do. It's cool, huh? Yeah. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot, man. That's cool. That's one thing that's different, man, about living here instead of living in California, predominantly anyway, is just feeling that weather come. In California, if there's weather, you feel like it's part of a movie set. You're just, because it's always the same, the weather's always nice, so you get something a little different. You feel like somebody just, it was part of, like the producer just sent it, or director just, uh, send in the, uh, let's do five mile, five mile per hour winds. Yeah, can you raise the wind and send a bird? Let's send a bird. Send two birds. Yeah, it's spring. <laughs> That's what it feels like out there in California if something comes through that it's all designed. But here you get a natural piece of something. And it's nice, man. You remember that there's a bigger director out there. There's Mother Nature's out there. And that bad bitch is Union. And she is... uh. She's doing whatever she wants now because she has tenure and she's not worried about getting fired. And she gets a two hour lunch break, even though she only has a five hour work day. So, but <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for that call, man. Riley Mel, you got any information on that uh, Bob Hope statue? I do. So it says that Bob Hope may be something of a forgotten figure, as a Los Angeles Times writer said in a November 29th story about a new biography on the late comedian Hope Entertainer of the Century. Okay, what about the statue, Bubba? There is a 9-foot, 5-inch tall fiberglass and cement uh, statue that has stood for 34 years in uh, Rockford. Rockford, Illinois? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah, man, that's beautiful. Now, something, see, that's something you see different places. Small towns like to do that and like to honor something. Tallest statue, Bob Hope. Did he ever go see it, does it say? And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's Riley Mao right there. All right, let's take uh, let's take another call that came in here. Um, this was from actually the New Jersey show, and this fella came uh, came through, and he sent in a video actually, and this fella named Dan Romeo. Yo, what's up, Theo? So um, here we go. Kind of hard to see because of this camera angle, but 
And if you can see on the video here, they got video. And he sent us video. And video basically it's like a million pictures at once, man. Right here we got Dan Romeo hitting us up and he just showed us, if you can see on the video here, he showed us he, he, he's a wheelchair man, this man. He's that bionic fella. You know, he's that wheelie wheelie hit man. This dude could go off a ramp and be like that, man, and be wild. Because of this camera angle, but my name's Dan. I was that dude in the uh, wheelchair at your late show in Jersey. That shit was funny as fuck. I don't think we expected anything less. You killed it up there. Gave Thanks, brother. I appreciate you, Daniel. It's all good laughter in this pandemic time. Take our minds off this shit for a little bit. And uh, fuck it, dude. Me and you start traveling around this globe, fucking up people, fucking up uh, family barbecues and three-legged racing and smoking them. Both stay on our side of the leg, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I sure do, brother. And I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you with this call. And yeah, if you got no legs, man, I got two. I'll give you one, man. We'll both each stand there on it. Like a flamingo. You know, maybe have us, you know, share a cigarette or something. Or I'm not smoking now, but you could take some hits and blow it into my mouth as long as our lips don't touch. You feel me? Onward. Yeah, man, I appreciate the kind words and the shout out. That shit was unreal. All my buddies and me, we all watched the podcast and we were all they were all sending me clips before I got to watch it. And I I was like, holy shit, this is fucking unreal. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being out there, man. You know, and I never... You know, I've always had legs my whole life, and and I, I didn't plan on it, but I just, you know, once I was alive, I just had them, and, you know, so it's always interesting when I meet somebody that's, you know, that's just, that's doing it a different way, because I think life is like that. Sometimes you get legs, sometimes you don't. You know, it's kind of like mounds and uh, almond joy. You know, and I got them freaking almonds, bro. I mean, and you, uh, and you, you know, you more the, um, you more the, you roll them without, you know, sand nuts, they call it. But, uh, but anyway, I love you, man, and I appreciate it. And it's good to see your face here, dude, because I couldn't see you that well from the stage. And, um, next time I come out there, dude, yeah, we'll go do a show. Maybe we hit the vaudeville or something. You know, I do a flute and you come out and do something, go off a little ramp or something. You know, or maybe we get a uh, train an animal to be involved, have a little canary land on you or something. Or we have you in a box the whole time on the stage and then we surprise everybody at the end. And you roll, you know, maybe part of the box opens up and you roll out. You know, and do a, uh, you know, do a bottle rocket or do something. Some tor sort of flare activity or something so a lot of possibilities man a lot of possibilities uh what else do we got this episode's all over the place i will say that um we got this call came in here we go hey theo this is Braden from denver colorado Hey, Braden, and I got a little nephew named Braden who lives over there in um, Spanish Fork in uh, Alabama. Let's hear more. Um, with all the negativity that's been going on in the news and the pandemic, I just wanted to let you know about something positive that came about it. My childhood friends back in middle school and high school were all over the country and for us to get together, but because of all the extra time everybody's got and everybody working remotely, we have set up a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that meets up uh, once a week. So every Thursday, we get together and we hunt dragons and do all sorts of fun stuff together. And uh... look, I think. <sighs> I don't even know how to get into this. I think it's beautiful you guys are getting together, man. Do I think the Dungeons and Dragons always never really didn't know how to handle that vibe? You know, you'd always be, you'd see people meeting up in the back of a Quiznos or something at night. 
and some guy's got a purple beard and he's got, you know, his lady's got them big, big, big beefy tits, you know, them big freaking, them slush guppies, dog, them but just damn like a damn, just big old tits, you know, kind of tits, you hear somebody rev a truck when you see them, just vroom, right when you see them, like damn, you know. That titty's got octane, you know. It just you feel that titty a little. You see that titty, you know, like uh, the kind of breast is so big it could tell you're looking at it. So you look the other way out of sheer just embarrassment or you know, mild shame. But men meeting up to play Dungeons and Dragons at night, man. I'll tell you this: I remember when I was in junior high, and I was good in junior high, and. And I saw they had some kids playing it outside one day. And you'd see every, you know, one of the kids looked like Rapunzel and it was a boy, you know. And he'd have his hair braided into a, you know, into the other kid was wearing his hair braided as a damn scarf. And they were all, it was just wild shit. You'd have some guy would have his nose, his septum pierced, and he'd have a spare key hanging off it. You know, to get into school and. All of them hated gym class. These were the kids who did not like gym class. And I saw a a big gull. We didn't get a lot of gulls. You know, seagulls, pelicans. We didn't get a lot of them flying over campus when I was in junior high. But every now and then, the winds would switch over there over the um, poncher train. And a pelican would come, come by. And I saw a pelican defecate onto a damn uh, Dungeons and Dragons game. And I, that shit made me feel good, man, honestly, when it happened. May the pelicans be ever in your favor, my friend. What about the news, Riley? Why don't you peep the news and uh, get it ready for us? I'm going to tell uh, everybody about one of our sponsors right here. And I want to tell you guys that um that there's something called Fairdy. And if you're not familiar with it, you should know. With these times right now, I feel like fashion is over. You know, you see somebody wearing a Trisket uh, box as a helmet. You'll see somebody wearing a damn... Uh, you know, you'll see somebody with a mask made out of a damn uh, craft single. In the words of my friend Trevor Wallace, that's what he says. You know, he saw a man with a, you know, wearing a craft single as a mask. You know, people are different. There's different trends. So how are we supposed to know what to shop for right now? Well, don't buy for now. Buy for forever. For timeless pieces that will last a lifetime of wear, check out Faherty. 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 Makes high quality, comfortable clothing for life. That's right. High quality, comfortable clothing for life. You know, gone are the days when you go get you a little singlet or something. Get you a new panty. Oh, I don't have a panty. Get you one, boy. Get you a little panty, bucko. Every piece is made to last a lifetime. You're going to need it, guys. The end of the world is right around the corner. What are you going to wear? Something that'll last a month? F no. This company is run by the Faraday family. And they are very hands-on in ensuring everything they do lives up to their values. The Faraday style is, well, it's one of its own. But it's one that you'll find comfortable. And one that you'll find almost legendary. In fact, the Legend Collection is legendary. It's the softest, coziest shirt I've ever worn. It's a good thing the quality stands up to everyday wear because I want to wear it every day. That's right. I want to wear my Faraday every day. Buying forever is the smartest way to shop right now. And now's the smartest time to do it. Right now, you can get 25% off your next Faraday purchase when you go to FaradayBrand.com slash Theo. That's F-A-H-E-R-T-Y, Faraday, brand, dot com, slash Theo, for 25% off Faraday, brand, 
dot com slash Theo. Rally Mao, hit us with a news item, brother. Well, in a British wildlife park, they have removed five cursing parrots from public. Okay, and when you say cursing parrots, what do you mean? Like parrots that they're, what, casting spells on pub- on public? I mean that they have foul language. Oh. Fowls have foul language. Okay. And any other information they're giving you? Um, it just says that the birds shared the ability to curse up a storm, something they engaged in quite often. Hmm. Okay. So they're doing it, and where is it happening, you said? In a British wildlife park. Yep. Yep. You know, when I was young, Riley, you'd see a, um, when I was young, you'd see a mobile zoo was popular. You know, and that was a man had a nice van or an extended van, even sometimes a church van. And this man, uh, you know, a man would have a, a mobile zoo. And so, you know, uh, somebody come through town with a chimp and a uh, a small dolphin in an aquarium or something in a big van, you know, and you, you know, pay a dollar, go see it. Or somebody come through, roll through with two chimps and a beagle. And that was maybe 75 cent. You go see it, you know, see them. And sometimes the beagle try to mate with everybody. Beetle, beagle, you know, a deranged beagle will fuck anything. And that's probably, that's practically scripture, man. Uh, but we had a fella come through town one time, and he had a couple of starlings, I believe. And they were birds. And um, and they'd curse. you go give them a dollar, half dollar, and they'd call you the N-word, call you the S-word. You know, call you a Jew. For a dollar, they'd call you a Jew. And it was just a different time. Uh, it was just a different time, you know, when a man, when a traveling zoo was more, you know, they didn't have as much legal issues. Nowadays, somebody, you know, you know, a friend of mine got bit outside of a BJ's pizza by a damn, uh, by a Australian shepherd. And that's a lawsuit. Whereas when I was young, you'd pay maybe 50 cents for that. So we're living in different times, man. Um, And I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I spent a couple dollars over there. Because this fella's little zoo broke down by us. And you'd get over there and a starling would call you this or call you that. You know, sometime for, you know, dollar fifty, you could get, you know, two N-words and a Jew out of the guy or something, you know, out of the thing. Or, you know, just... You know, you could strike up a deal. And what kind of uh, birds were they, Riley? Does it say? Um, they are the African African uh, gray parrots. Okay. So that's almost, I mean, let's be honest, bro. If it's African gray, that's almost a black. That's a, you know, that's an African-American bird. You know, I mean, I know there's different ways to say it, and but still, it's like, so if they're dropping them bombs, is that, you know, I don't know if that really, need, if that's article worthy. You know, I get if you got a white parrot litter or something out there and he, you know, you got a toucan and he's out there just humming in bombs at people while they're trying to buy a mouse or whatever, then that to me is risque, but, you know, this sounds just like nature kind of figuring itself out. Um, you know, in the 1600s, 1700s, they used to use cows to find, uh, like, I don't want to say landmines or, but explosives and stuff. Not 1700s, but like 1800s, 1900s. And they'd send them out there wandering out there, you know, until they, until they detonated it. So... You know anything about that? That might have even been a far Asian trick, uh, Riley. Have you had any? Have you heard anything about that at home? Any uh, on the home front? Any long to family tales or anything like that? I haven't. No. Any of your family in any of the wars? Iwo Jima, famous war. Not that I know of. Hmm. You seem like you might have a little warrior in you. Anybody ever told you that? Um. No. You would be the first. 
That's cool, bro. Thank you. All right, let's check out this next call here that came in. Hey, what's going on, Theo? This is Josh uh, from Missouri. And, uh, man, I, I don't know what I should do. I just need some advice. So my girl Thank you for calling Josh from Missouri or Missouri. Tell my stepdad used to call it Missouri. Up Missouri. And he died, actually. Let's hear more. Girlfriend started an OnlyFans, and uh, she's making pretty good money. But lately, she said she wants to uh, she wants me to be in the videos with her. Mm. I just don't know how I feel about that. I mean, she says she can make more money if I'm in them, but I just I don't really want my my penis and stuff being on camera. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering what you would do and give me some advice and see, you. gang, 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 bro. And look, it's a great question. You know, I remember when I was a little younger, a fella told me, hey, your penis ain't made for video. And I got to say that I agree with that. I think there's some OnlyFans stuff that you could do that's a little bit, you know, risque, but not as wicked. You know. Cause I don't know. Then you now you got to worry about the lighting. You got to worry about what if people comment? Oh, look at that! Look at that guy. Got that little dick, bro. Dude, two of those. Two two people saying, ah, look at Sam. He's got that little dick. You're never gonna be the same after reading those comments, man. So I don't know, Riley Mao. What do you think about that kind of stuff? You subscribed to any of that depravity? I do not. And how do you keep off of it? I I just keep off of it. And do you do you have any trouble look, looking at pornography or anything like that? I don't. Wow, really? Mm hmm God. And have you always been that way? Mm-hmm. Oh. Man. And how do you do it, you think? I mean, I, ju I just don't. There's not really a how. I just don't. Remarkable, buddy. Okay. Speaking of Riley Mal, let's get a, here, here, a call came in right about him. And here we go. Hey, man, this is Ruben Call from uh, Greenville, South Carolina. What's up, Ruben? And you got to respect a man named after a sandwich. You got to respect him. You, whether you know a guy named Grilled Cheese Whitaker or Reuben Harper, you know, or you, go, you know a guy named PB&J Washington, you got to respect somebody named after a damn edible lunch entree onward. I got to be honest with you, man. Riley Mao just ain't doing it for me. Uh, all my boys listen, my coworkers, my, my buddies. We all listen to your show. I love the boy. He's a good boy. I was a Boy Scout. He was a Boy Scout. He made it farther than I did. I got mad respect for him. I'm, I'm a Christian. He's a Christian. You know, we're brothers in that sense. Uh, but I don't, uh, I mean, I'm trying to be as nice as possible. Nicest guy in the world. He sounds like just a sweetheart. But I don't know for the purposes of your show if he's lending anything that, uh, let's see, he, 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 he ain't bringing a lot to the table. And I appreciate it, Ruben. I appreciate the feedback. You know, this is a feedback circle here. And people is allowed to feed back, and I don't even, I don't even damn you for it, brother. I want to hear what you have to say. And he just says that you know he feels like you don't really that you don't bring a lot to the table, Riley. Have people ever told you that in your life before or not? Oh, all the time. All right, let's see. Let's get another call. We had another call that came in about you. And uh, let's see what we can do here about it. Uh, hi, my name is Henry. I'm in middle school. And, well, I'm pretty good with the bow staff. I train almost every day. <laughs> and I hear that Riley's Asian, so that's pretty much a given that, well, he's in martial arts. So I challenge him to a duel. Uh, gang. <laughs> 
There you go. And I don't even know if we can legally even listen to a middle, ch uh, I don't know how old that child is. And it could be also, he could be 18 or 19 in middle school. We had a guy named Larry or Mr. Larry. They called him eventually when I was in middle school. And he was, he was at least 19. And he could come. I remember in the bathroom, we'd be in there urinating, you know, just doing water out the front. And, uh, He'd come in and pee right over you into the urinal, just showing off, you know, because he was, I mean, hell, he was fully developed and his, you know, and he just had a damn cannon on him. He had that freaking, God dang, he had that, you know, that 19-year-old spout on him. We're all out here just using a, everybody's penis looked like a little igloo, something you see on an igloo water cooler. And he shows up with this big dang Lincoln log, you know, but... Anyway, uh, Riley, you got a child right there challenging you. Could you beat a child in a contest? I yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. You think yeah. you can beat that kid's ass, honestly, Henry? Um, I mean, I don't know. He he might be faking the faking the voice. He might be like a really tough guy. I don't know. And how would you approach it? You think? Well, I mean, I would tell him, you know, come over to come over to the Middle East. And we'll uh, we'll hash it out. Okay. So there you go. You got a real challenge right there. He's saying bring it over to the Central East, you mean. Bring it over to the Central East and we'll hash it out. You know? And that's how you right there. People want to uh, doubt on Riley Mao. He'll just, he just offered to beat the shit out of a damn middle schooler. So... I mean, if that ain't if that ain't beautiful, baby, I don't know what is. You know, especially during these tough times, man. Especially during these tough times. I'll tell you what else is good, man. Mint Mobile. Breaking up with your old wireless provider just got a whole lot easier thanks to Mint Mobile. You know, they were the first company to sell premium wireless service online only. And now Mint Mobile is introducing their unlimited data plan for just 30 bucks a month. Let that sink in a little. An unlimited plan for $30 a month. How much is your soon-to-be X wireless company charging you? I mean, I'm paying $180 a month for my line. You know, I'm also supporting some of my family members, semi dead beats, but hey, that's that's what did we do. For people that hate their phone bill and are ready to cut ties with big wireless, Mint Mobile offers their premium unlimited plan for just thirty bucks a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get your unlimited wireless plan for just 30 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash T-H-E-O. That's M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash Theo. Cut your unlimited wireless bill to 30 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Theo. All right, let's take another call right here. Hey, Theo, this is uh, Rob Cohn from Atlanta. What's up, Rob? Thank you for the call, my friend, and I appreciate you from Atlanta. Not sure what you're up to this Tuesday, but Buffalo Bills will be in Nashville, and if you're free, I got an extra ticket for you, man. There's nothing we welcome more to the Bills Mafia than a nice, strong mullet. Not going to be a full crowd, but if you want to come through and watch Josh Allen tear up the Titans, man, let me know. I'd love to see my buddy Harrison Phillips over there uh, play over there for Buffalo. And he plays Buffalo Bills football. And I'd love to see him do it. So maybe we'll get out there. And they're undefeated over there, both of the teams. Both of the teams undefeated. Zero losses, two teams. And that's good football. So thank you for that. Um... What else? Anything else you want to share with us, Riley? Um, 
I did see that a man told snakeskin isn't a legitimate face covering. There you go. There you go. All right. I want to say this, man. Uh, we had a lot of calls last week. You know, I was going through a tough time, and and sometimes I just am. Sometimes I just am going through a tough time, and uh, and I just want to say thanks for the nice calls and the support. You know, I appreciate it. Um. You know, I just have this thing inside of me where I just, I forget. I just, I just, there's just part of me that forgets that people care about me. It just forgets it. It's like a, it's almost like a, it's like a software issue where, you know, it just kind of, that part of the, the, residual effect of people caring about me just dissipates pretty quickly um and and so it's just a you know i appreciate a lot of nice reminders that came in and um and people just sharing some of their thoughts and so i want to uh just honor a couple of those man let's get into it What's up, Will? Thank you for the call, Will. And you know, I grew up with a fellow they called Will the Thrill. And he invited us over to his house one time uh, for a party, and some fella had just learned to masturbate in our group. And we didn't know about it. He hadn't just learned. He'd known, maybe. He was probably, this dude might have been 26, and he was in uh, middle school or junior high. Or pre junior high. And so we're all in a hot tub. We're relaxing, you know, it's birthday party. And you ever been to a birthday party for a hot tub, Riley? Well, you gotta get out more, man. It was uh yeah, about maybe eight boys sitting in a hot tub. And and this is in Louisiana. And if you have a hot tub in Louisiana, first of all, you are obviously clinically not doing well because that's basically like making soup. It's basically, there's never, there's been four cold days in the history of Louisiana. So to have a hot tub is just, it's delinquent. It's all, you're basically making soup out of whoever you invite to sit in it. So we got a basically an eight child booyah base going on out there. We got an eight child gumbo brewing out there and some fella named CJ Vickery had learned to, uh, you know, jerk himself off. And nothing, the rest of us didn't know about it. We'd never heard of it. We'd never seen it. We'd never even seen a drawing of somebody ejaculating. And uh, so he's touching his body under the water. You know, being secretive, doing secretive touch. And suddenly when he's about to ejaculate, he pulls his body up out of the water and he starts just kind of, you know, just ejacking into the little pool, into the little hot tub. And Will, this kid, Will the Thrill, they called him, grabbed his penis to stop it because he thought something bad was happening to him. He was having a bad reaction or something because he'd never seen it. So he grabbed it to stop it and like squeeze it and uh and the kid punched him. Kid punched him right in the neck. And that hurts, bro. Seeing somebody get punched in the neck, man, when they when they're trying to hold on to somebody else's penis for no reason. I don't know. The whole thing was just it was a lot, man. It was a lot of levels. It was kind of like the Odyssey. You ever read the Odyssey Rally? I have. And you, it was pretty wild, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very similar to that. And uh, anyway, man, so I knew a fellow named Will, man. Uh, let's hear more. Thanks for the call. Um, I'm just listening to your uh, podcast. That you just put out the um, one about where you, you know, you want to drink. And, you know, for me, man. 
I've been in recovery. I've got a little over two and a half years right now. And I absolutely know what you're going through. Um, for me, it was just feeling miserable and not having the drugs and the alcohol to turn to and wondering, like, well, damn, what else? You know, I'm going to the gym. I'm uh, going to meetings. I'm going to church. I'm doing all these things. I'm doing everything y'all tell me to do. But I still feel, you know, down. I still wake up. I asked people, I said, do you wake up happy? And they're like, yeah. And I said, damn. <laughs> you know, I couldn't remember the last time that I woke up happy. Man, I can really, I, 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 I can relate, man. Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, not, nobody gets everything. Every, every, everybody gets some things. You know, some people are, you know, might be good at math and some people, you know, uh, wake up happy. You know, some people like uh, pudding and, and some people can't, you know, can, can draw. You know, it's all the way God makes it. I think everything evens out. Nobody gets it all. You know, somebody's beautiful, but they might be dumb. You know, somebody might be dumb, but they could, uh you know, but they could teach you how to sing if you need to sing real quick. Everybody has different capabilities. Um, And yeah, one of my strong suits is not waking up happy, man. It's just waking up at a deficit. And yeah, I can do all the things, but sometimes that's just my walk in the world. And so each day I have to have a, uh, or each day I find that a program, if I follow a program, then it helps me. Um, and the best program I've found for myself is through 12-step in recovery. To battle that daily, oh, here we go again. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I can't handle this. Oh, I feel this way. It gets me out of me and gets me on to someone else or on to God before I can get to myself, you know. Um, but yeah, when I meet somebody that wait, when I meet somebody who wakes up happy, oh, I'm so envious. It's like, God, oh, God, oh, how do you do it? I mean, that's my David Blaine right there. When I meet somebody who wakes up full of joy, just wakes up you get that free gift of joy man that's beautiful but it gives me something to work towards man it gives me a daily battle and i and i got to be thankful also for that daily battle even on the days when i lose it um you know cuz if we woke up and just had everything man it would I don't. I probably. I don't know if I'd want that. Let's take another call, man. Here we go. Yo, Theo, what's up, man? This is uh, Jay. I'm from New York. What's up, Jay? Thank you for calling, man. Onward. All right. I'm just calling. I was just listening to your last episode with the uh, asthma, uh, as Mr. Asthma attack. Uh, dri yeah, that driver. That fella had that asthma. We had to pull over. So we could, you know, you know, so we could lung up off the freaking turnpike, gang. Driving the Uber, freaking pulling over to breathe some of this funk, breathe some of this funk air that we have in the New York, New Jersey area. Um, you seemed a little down. You seemed a little depressed. Um, I just wanted to kind of reach out and let you know. Um, you did move to Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so it's a whole other area of the country. Coming from L.A. where it's more sunny, more sunshine, yada, yada. But um, I just want to let you know, a lot of people around the fall time start to get depressed uh, due to, um, you know, nature. The leaves, are, the leaves are falling off the trees, and uh, the trees are giving off that pheromone of, you know, dying. And it's, it's natural, man. It's natural. And you have a lot on your plate. You know, you've been clean. You've been sober. I'm a big fan of the show, Gang Gang. 
And um, I just want to let you know, man, it's, it's just a normal it's a normal thing to be depressed at this time of the year, especially moving from another, you know, from a city to another city. So, um, you know, just hold in there, man. Springtime will be back around. All right, let's take another call here. Yo, what up, Theo? This is Luis. Uh, just getting to your adult asthma episode. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I usually stay on top, but I kind of fell behind the episodes. And, you know, you're saying, you know, God does for you what you can't do for yourself. And, you know, I needed to hear that because, you know, as you're doing your sobriety, I'm also dealing with what do I have to do and you know the clerk telling you that you can't go to the restaurant was almost synonymous with my cell phone dying as I was texting my dealer you know I, I've been sober now for one month and it's been the hardest month so far I can't sleep I can't eat uh, but you know, listening to your podcast only reassured me that, you know, what I'm doing is the right thing. And, you know, it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. And, you know, when you deal with these stressful moments and these instances where you just want to binge, it's it's hard, man. Wow, man. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I guess got to remember that it's hard sometimes. You know, and I just... You know, it just means a lot, man. I appreciate it. I really do. And, um, yeah, your phone dying while you're texting your dealer. That's wild. What a blessing on It's crazy. And, yeah, for some people, and some people say, well, hey, man, just have a drink or go party one night and let the edge out. And that's fine. That's definitely an option. But I just, when I, when I don't want to do that option, and some people don't have a problem. If you don't have a problem, then it's then it then more power to you. You know? I'll tickle your cousin while you do a line off his ass, bro. You know what I'm saying, dude? I'm out there. I'm out there, bro. You know? I'll I'll freaking, you know. You know, I'll give your stepmother a Zerbert, bro. While she's doing a line, bro, or something. Whatever we gotta do, you know. I I mean, but I just if I go out like that then i who i don't know if i'm coming back sometimes because i like to ride that dust you feel me you know what i'm saying i like to all aboard on that dust donkey son that's where i'm at if you find me bro i'll be out there on that dust I'll I'll freaking I'll snort a ring off of Saturn, baby. You feel me? I'll snort a ring off of Saturn, son. So I just got to be careful with it. But man, I'm glad I'm glad you got a month, man. It makes me feel good for you, and just not feel good for you. It just makes me feel happy. I'm just happy that you feel good for you. Yeah, man. Because that's powerful. It's just powerful. Um. So. But yeah, man, thank you guys for all the kind messages and stuff. And what have I done this week to take care of myself a little bit better? Um, well, for one, I was coming down off probably off of testosterone. I would, I would I'd been taking testosterone, um, that TRT replacement and stuff like that. And uh, so there probably could have been some side effects of that. Um, you know, uh, but this week I've been just trying to stay more uh, busier with my running um working with a new therapist um making a gratitude list every day and really sticking to it and even recording my gratitude list on audio and then send it to to some of my buddies who also make them and having them send it back you know no homo bro or yes homo whatever but uh that's the kind of stuff that that, that this past week has been saving me um and just keeping me in a in a keeping my spirit more comfortable. So yeah, I was born with an uncomfortable spirit. You know, I was born with an uncomfortable spirit. Um so but yeah, I appreciate it. just so much so, a lot of kind words, man. A lot of kind words and um it just meant a lot. So thank you. 
All right. Well, uh, we will. We're looking also for unique characters to come in. So follow TPW Instagram, and we'll let you know some possible, you know, um, unique type character type people that we would like to have on the show and unique uh, humans. And um, and we'll do what we can. And you know, we made it through it. You know, that's one thing today. We rolled with the punches. Um, you know, we were expecting to have a female trucker in, and it didn't happen. And we wish her well and hope that she's safe wherever she is. And uh, we just do what we can. And any parting words you have, Riley? No, not at all. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll leave out the way we came in. This is Paul Cawthon with some good music. Holy Ghost Fire. I got the Holy Ghost Fire and it's burning in me. I got the Holy Ghost fire burning in me. Got the Holy Ghost fire and I'm burning down the streets. Yeah. I got a sweet little baddie at your own in a caddy with me. I got a sweet little baddie at your own in a caddy with me. I got a whole lot of product for my Holy Ghost mama She making sweet eyes at me Don't let me down My sweet mama Sweet mama don't let me down sweet mama don't let me down I'm a homeless man A dying to get you in the palm of my hand The drum, probably got him. Stay. But if I filled you in, would you take it to the grave? Because the secret ain't no secret if you give it all away. Oh, don't let me die. Oh, oh, sweet mama. Oh, sweet mama, don't let me die. 